And uh, this is Jack going to, uh, he, he writes great when he writes about jazz and going to jazz clubs. And this is uh, Jack Kerouac in San Francisco going to a jazz club. But one night, we suddenly went mad together again. We went to see Slim Gaylord in a little Frisco nightclub. Slim Gaylord is a, thaw, is a tall, thin Negro with big, sad eyes who's always saying, write a Rooney. And how about a little bourbon a Rooney? In Frisco, great eater, in Frisco, great eager crowds of young, semi-intellectuals sat at his feet and listened to him on the piano, guitar, and bongo drums. When he gets warmed up, he takes off his shirt and undershirt and really goes. He does and says anything that comes into his head. He'll sing cement mixer, put it, put it, and suddenly slow down the beat and brood over his bongos with fingertips barely tapping the skin as everybody leans forward breathlessly to hear. You'll, you, you think he'll do this for a minute or so, but he goes right on for as long as an hour making an imperceptible little noise with the tips of his and fingernails smaller and smaller all the time till you can't hear it. Till you can't hear it anymore and sounds of traffic come in the open door. Then he slowly gets up and takes the mic and says very slowly, Greater Rooney, fine a Rooney, hello Rooney, Burbona Rooney, hello Rooney. How are the boys in the front row making out with their girls a Rooney, a Rooney, a Rooney? A Rooney Rooney. He keeps this up for 15 minutes, his voice getting softer and softer until you can't hear. His great sad eyes scan the audience. Dean stands in the back saying, God, yes, and clasping his hands in prayer and sweat and sal. Slim knows time. He knows time. Slim sits down at the piano and hits two notes, two C's, then two more, then one, then two, and suddenly the big burly bass player wakes up from a reverie and realizes Slim is playing C Jam Blues, and the slugs and his big forefinger on the string, and the big booming beat begins, and everybody starts rocking, and Slim looks just as sad as ever. And they blow jazz for half an hour, and then Slim goes mad, grabs the bongos, and plays tremendous, rapid Cubana beats, and yells crazy things in Spanish, and Arabic, and Peruvian dialect, and Egyptian, in every language he knows, and he knows innumerable languages. Finally, the set is over. Each set takes two hours. Slim Gaylord goes and stands against a post, looking sadly over everybody's head. People come to talk to him. A bourbon is slipped into his hand. Berber Rooney, thank you. Nobody knows where Slim Gaylord is. Dean once had a dream that he was having a baby, and his belly was all bloated up blue, and he lay on the grass of a California hospital. Under a tree, with a group of colored men sat Slim Gala. Dean turned the sparing eyes of a mother to him. Slim said, there you go, Rooney. Now Dean approached him. He approached his God. He thought Slim was God. He shuffled and bowed in front of him and asked, asked him to join us. Right, a Rooney, says Slim. He'll join anybody, but he won't guarantee to be there with you in the spirit. Dean got a table, bought drinks, and sat stiffly in front of Slim. Slim dreamed over his head. Every time Slim, sled, Slim said, a Rooney, Dean said, yes. I sat there with these two madmen. Nothing happened. To Slim Gaylord, the whole world was just one big Rooney. That same night, I dug Lampshade and Fillmore and Geary. Lampshade is a big colored guy who comes into musical Frisco saloons with coat, hat, and scarf and jumps on the bandstand and starts singing. The veins pop in his forehead. He heaves back and blows a big foghorn blues out of every muscle in his soul. He yells at people while he's singing. Don't die to go to heaven. Start in on Dr. Pepper and end up on whiskey. His voice booms over everything. He grimaces, he writhes, he does everything. He came over to our table, leaned over to us and said, yes. And then he staggered out to the street to hit another saloon. Then there's Connie Jordan, a madman who sings and flips his arms and ends up splashing sweat on everybody and kicking over the mic and screaming like a woman. And you see him late at night, exhausted, listening to wild jazz sessions at Jameson's Nook, with big round eyes and limp shoulders, a big kooky skin, a stare into space and a drink in front of him. 
I never saw such crazy musicians. Everybody in Frisco blew. It was the end of the continent. They didn't give a damn. Dean, Dean and I goofed, goofed around San Francisco in this manner until I got my next GI check and got ready to go back home. What I accomplished by coming to Frisco, I don't know. Camille wanted me to leave. Dean didn't care one way or another. I bought a loaf of bread and meats and made myself 10 sandwiches to cross the country with again. They were all going to go rotten on me by the time I got to Dakota. The last night, Dean went mad and found Mary Lou somewhere downtown, and we got in the car and drove all over Richmond across the bay, hitting Negro jazz shacks and the oil flats. Mary Lou went to sit down, and a colored guy pulled a chair out from under her. The gals approached her in the genre of propositions. I was approached, too. Dean was sweating around. It was the end. I wanted to get out. At dawn, I got my New York bus and said goodbye to Dean and Mary Lou. They wanted some of my sandwiches. I told them, no. It was a sullen moment. We were all thinking we'd never see one another again, and we didn't care.